Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the FRS Division 2. We're just past the halfway point of the season now. Round 7, we're taking a visit to Circuit Paul Ricard in France. And now let's take a look at that track. 5.8 kilometers around, 15 corners around this test track. Two DRS zones, one down the pit straight and one into the mid back straight chicane. No DRS in the second half of that back straight, but still a passing opportunity. It is only the second time that the FRS has visited Circuit Paul Ricard, so it is relatively unknown. Turns one and two, of course, the best overtaking opportunity, or one of them, right down the, after the DRS zone of the pit straight. You're into that left-right chicane, and then, of course, turns eight and nine, another left-right chicane at the end of a DRS zone. We may see some runs out of this little chicane here, or actually, it's a rather large chicane, down into uh, turn 11 the flat out right hander but here are the tires the soft medium and hard as usual the medium is about seven tenths of a second slower per lap the hard's 1.5 seconds slower per lap around the circuit and we are looking at lifespans only eight laps on the softs 14 on the mediums and 20 on the hard so unlikely to see the soft tires in any kind of racing earnest around the uh, the circuit this time We'll take a moment and get ready to take a look at the uh, the championship tables as they stand. And Robin B at the top of the tables, just ahead of Spen, so they maintain the one two spots. Chronicle jumps up to P3 as Gali is slid down, although tied on points and is just the count back that makes that difference. We are still in P5, uh, but Zhao has jumped up with their race win to 51 points. We've opened up a little bit of a gap to our teammate Dog. Bananarama, Pathaman, and Ayag still round out the top 10 in this one in various forms. So we'll jump out into qualifying and here we are and it is raining in qualifying. Intermediate conditions and we are uh, due for some weather during the race itself. So we are on kind of a, a semi-wet setup, but not super wet. Here's somebody coming out of the pits. We just have to make sure that we are clear of them. And down into turn one and two, oh, cresting over the hill. A little too, bit, too much curb there in the back end, just snaps. And the uh, the pendulum effect, if you overcorrect by just a hair, it throws you back even harder the other way. So first lap out of the box, no real improvement uh, to go there. If you notice, it's only 12 minutes left to go in the session. It was very heavy rain at the first couple of minutes. So nobody really went out to set any laps in that first, uh, first few minutes. But... We are going to start up now a, a valid lap, and as you do in rainy sessions, you typically are going to fuel up. You can see we've got 3.4 laps worth of fuel on board, so you're typically going to fuel up to do a few laps. Um, as the, you just kind of want to be on track in the as the conditions change, um, the fuel load isn't as much of a difference. You typically want to kind of almost split it 50-50, go half of a session, then go get new tires and go half more. So. We are on the uh, our second flying lap, although the first one had that spin and was invalid. Um, but we are showing big improvements, of course, because of that um, that spin. And it is our first time in the wet weather down into the turn eight nine chicane. So try and take some of the curb. It helps to kind of hook the car around. And now it's all about getting on throttle, back end dancing as I'm trying to put down as much throttle as I can. And as uh, as of course you probably noticed the uh, the racing line is turned on in this case it's something uh since last season now i've uh, i've opted or since the start of this season rather after incidents in previous seasons i've opted to do is in wet conditions um pretty much everybody else runs the racing line on um which in dry conditions is fine i i'm, I'm happy to take on the challenge of spotting out the brake markers but in the wet conditions in changing conditions um you kind of have to be more careful and um, when everybody behind you is using the racing line that's telling them where to break and if you break 15 meters early because you're not sure if the track has gotten better or worse then um, people crash into the back of you and uh, ruin your day so I uh, that, uh, that is the reason why in these changing conditions I opt for leaving the racing line on just for uh, for smoothness if everybody else was running racing line off, I would be happy to do it as well in the wet conditions, but uh, as I have for six seasons. But uh, yeah, so that is the reason why it is the only times you will see me turn this on. I 
will typically have it on uh, if there's a, a chance of rain uh, in the race as well. So we will uh, we will pl have it on even though I think we are anticipating a dry start to the race that moves to rain. So we found a little bit of time improvement through the first sector. Uh, now through the chicane, a little slow on the apex and exit. We had gotten something done, but that big snap of wheel spin we had on the last lap means that we can get that delta moving in the right direction once again. It's about a, about a tenth quicker than our last lap so far. Provisionally P5 at the moment with uh, about the midway point of this qualifying session ticking up in about 15 seconds. 18 minutes, the qualifying... Uh, for the FRS, just one 18-minute session. Get as many runs in as you desire. And then uh, it's on to a 50% distance race. But decent run through the final sector. Still uh, getting a feel for the car. Robin goes provisionally P1 on a 42-3-4-2. Whereas we are looking for... Uh, really, we're only going to be maybe into the 40, uh, 42s. And just barely, uh, just outside of it, 42.979, so just sneaking in. That does put us provisionally P2, but a long way adrift, six tenths shy of Robin's time. And you can see I've turned off the ERS as we are going back to the pit lane. So jumping out one last time. Three minutes left to go in this session, so I should be able to get two, maybe if I'm very good, three flying laps in. We got 3.25 laps of fuel left on board and a good run through turn one and two. Keeps us pretty much uh, just a little ahead of our previous best lap time. We've been shuffled down to provisionally fifth. The track has been improving a little bit. Um, so we we did fall down a little ways as people got their runs in. And fighting with the traction. You see doing a lot of work on the steering wheel uh, in the wet conditions. And that is for somebody out in the barriers. I believe that is Gal or AR-21. So that is ar the Alpine of AR out of the session here. You can see big improvement for us. We're up almost four tenths, a little bit timid on the brakes in there, but we're trying to just kind of maximize the line for the exit. A little deep at the midpoint. And now big slide. The back end gets around on us a bit, and that is a huge time loss all the way down this straight. Chronicle has taken over provisional pole with their last lap. We'll see if we can make up some time in the final sector. We are... Still on for an improvement, but not the improvement that we necessarily need. Remember, even before we came into the pits last time, we were six-tenths off of Robin's previous provisional pole time. So coming through the final sector, looking at about three-tenths of a second of gain here, trying to get a good run through the last corner. Very slow, very tricky. Get the car rotated around and now on the throttle, which in... With no traction control, a thousand horsepower under that right foot is very easy to spin those wheels up. We find about a quarter of a second, so we're down into the 42 sevens, which is enough to get us uh, keep us P5. I believe that moved us just ahead of Pathaman. So a minute 52 still on the clock. There's fuel on board and time on board, but I don't know if we'll have the ERS to go for a third flying lap. So this will likely be the last opportunity we have to really pelt one in kind of know where we've made the mistakes already around this lap and this time a good run through sector one finding about a tenth and a half and now through this high speed left hander and we are improving all the way down this back straight so speeds picking up and down into the braking zone we will go can we find some time into this chicane we've been well wide of the exit a few times this time not much more tidy little wiggle so throttle gets down much better and that is a huge improvement it's another three tenths worth of time of purple in the middle sector so fastest of anyone so far and now just one sector left to go in this one this tricky seam corner long right hander decreasing radius you're kind of breaking and downshifting a little catch of a slide there somehow kept the car pointed in the right direction while getting on the throttle but now a little wide as we come in but that allows us to kind of straighten out our exit run so we have the opportunity golly goes provisionally fastest a 41 8 but we are looking at nearly finding a second and since we're on 42 7 a second would put us at 41 7 a good exit from the final corner just a second and a tenth a second and, a, and an eight so a 41 5 6 9 we go on to provisional pole 
in this one. So that will put us in a very good spot with uh, only a couple seconds left to go for people to... Uh, if anybody's going to try and go for another flying lap. But we jump ahead. Chuck does manage to just pip us uh, to pole position. 41-3. Now, in retrospect, in hindsight, uh, Chuck actually had a qualifying uh, a qualifying ban he did not serve. So we could have had a, uh, could have had a nice cheeky pole position. But uh, front row, fine enough. I'm quite happy with it. And uh, now we take a quick look as we're getting in, looking at the weather. You can see sunny to cloudy to rainy in the last kind of third of the race. We'll see uh, if it'll dry up maybe at the end. So we are going to underfuel a bit. We are starting on the hard tire. Basically, the strategy is go to the end, go till the rain on the hard tire. So off the line we go. Not a great start, but good enough as it looks like Chronicle didn't get a great start. Uh, behind, although he's coming back at us, as we're going to leave the door open on the inside, leave some space for him, and now we're going to switch. And now that we've got the nose ahead or full car ahead, we'll just cover him off. And Chronicle again, very uh, aggressive driver, likes to make some lunges. So uh, early on, I'm making sure to to leave a lane if he decides to go for it. I don't want to chop him off and end up with him uh, collecting my gearbox because I feel like in this condition, I've got better potential race pace than Chuck does. So I was just trying to hang on and we are burning a lot of battery. Chuck got off to a very good start though as we went wide in a few corners uh, as a result of leaving that door a bit open for uh, for Chronicle. But Robin already two seconds back of the pack. So it looks like we've already got a three car kind of breakaway forming. He's two seconds back of me. So he's about 1.3 back of Chronicle already. So a breakaway pack already forming, and you can see what you can do around this circuit in the dry, flat out in that high-speed right-hander, and then still just that brake downshift, get the car rotated and on the power as early as you dare. And into the final sector, we've managed to open up a little bit of a gap to Chronicle, so that'll give us breathing space in our braking zones and make sure that we're not uh, in danger of getting uh, caught in an incident. But he is just about hanging on to that one second DRS zone. I think I'm, I want to try and break that. We are starting to uh, drop back from Chuck a little bit. A good 42.5 for his uh, first lap. Decent uh, high fuel lap to start this race. But we are now going to, uh, to hustle our way around and try and stay on the back of Chuck, who is really just driving very well at the start of this race. So... I came into it thinking uh, I've got I've got him handled on on race pace for sure, but he's actually showing very good race pace at the start. And you know we've lost a bit of ground to Chronicle as well, so not the cleanest lap that we've driven. But we're gonna burn a good chunk of battery as DRS will be enabled next lap, so we want to make sure we're within that one second mar margin to Chuck. We don't want to put ourselves in a position where. We don't have the DRS help off of Chuck and Chronicle is getting DRS off of us. If we can put Chronicle in a train where we're kind of equalized on DRS, that is the ideal situation. So we are just about back into that one second margin. We do set the fastest middle sector of the early stages of this race, but likely because of all the battery we burned down the back straight. And Chuck, back end loose, coming out of scene, around he goes and uh, is promoting us into the lead of this race. Yellow flag's still there. He's got to wait for the field. And no, so Chuck is out of the session. So Chuck retires, and there's a full safety car called. Now, lap two, full safety car. I'm not planning on coming into the pit lane. Got to get this delta down. And so we are going to stay out on these hard tires. I expect most drivers will stay out with the way that the weather strategy is going to work out. So jumping ahead now to the restart, lap four. And just keep an eye on Chronicle, who is aggressive. He actually, see, I watched in the mirrors. He tried to time my restart, and I waited for him to have to back off before I put my foot down. So I was literally just watching my mirror for that entire restart uh, because I choose where to go. But I've gone deep in the first co first corner, so that's compromised me big time. And struggling to get the uh, the hard tires properly up to a, to a good temperature. I mean, they are in the green in the 80s, but it's not ideal uh, safety car was rather slow around here and you have to keep pressures fairly low as well 
to keep them in check in racing. So it does take some full speed racing laps in order to uh, to put the temperature in the tires that you need. But we've opened, we're, we're about six tenths ahead of Chronicle. And once again, three laps available until we have to go until DRS becomes enabled. So we do have a, a few laps to try and create that gap, but we're not exactly nailing our corners uh, so far. Uh, not exactly turning in the best lap. We do get off of the chicane decently. Another purple middle sector as we're burning a lot of battery this time. But we've got it to about nine tenths. And it, at this stage, I think I'm running lower downforce than what Chronicle is. I think I'm a little quicker in a straight line. Um, because he does make up some ground in the twisty bits. Whereas down the back straight, I don't know if that is because of... of battery deployment because at this time through the the third sector which is lots of corners i've actually done quite decently against a robin all the way to three seconds back so race pace wise i was feeling really good um chuck kind of was a little kick in the chest early because he was so quick at the start um but the mistake crept in and unfortunately got collected he wasn't able to rejoin safely we do get just to about a second over Chronicle, but he's going to get it back inside. And I think he's just got turn one and two figured out a little bit better than I do. So it may not even be a huge setup difference, but just a driving style difference. The tires are getting up to temperature now. You can see 92 on the cores of the fronts instead of 83 last time by. So definitely much better, but we are going to continue to burn down some battery. And it looks like he is using a fair chunk of battery down the back straight this time as he is taken about a, almost two tenths out of us uh, down just that straight line so we will see if we can uh, make that three tenths back before we hit the uh, okay, start finish line there's a local yellow it looks like one of the Ferraris is off in the background but seems to be uh, safely through and we are once again back to a second ahead of Chronicle a little wide through scene here but that uh, opens up where we can do a get a little bit of a run down into these, this tricky left-hander as you're kind of cresting the hill and, and driving a little bit awkwardly through there. But we've got it to 1.3 seconds, another spin from the Ferrari in scene. Um, but once again, a solo incident. Nothing uh, broken, nobody retired, so we should still be green flag racing. 1.3 the margin to Chronicle, we're burning... A good chunk of battery onto the straight, um, setting fastest laps, trying to run away. But now 1.6 the margin, we should be able to uh, maintain that gap all the way down to the DRS detection point, which we did. So jumping well ahead to lap 14 of 27. The sky is dark. We've got four seconds on Chronicle plus a three second time penalty. And the rain has arrived. The first drops just coming. You can see them streaking on the halo here. So... Hard tires, temperatures will be starting to drop pretty quickly. We're being very careful as uh, the weather, the rain is going to wet us up pretty quick. So going into our menu, setting our intermediate uh, tire for the next stop and just confirming the change. But we do have some some breathing space. Uh, six seconds to Robin as Chronicle will, is net about 7.4 seconds behind us. So... Our race pace has been very dominant so far today. Nobody's been really able to keep up. And now we head to uh, to the rain. DRS disabled, which is made the decision to uh, to pit this lap quite easy. Sometimes, like we saw in uh, in Imola earlier, I went out. I went that one lap longer on the dry tires because the track didn't wet up that quickly, and it did allow me to overcut my teammate, which resulted in our our race win in Imola, but now when it says DRS disabled, it is surely time to get on the inter. So getting the car slowed way down, very slow pit lane, 37 miles an hour. Um, but we are, you know, 5.7 seconds ahead of Chronicle as they, as they dip into the pit lane, plus their time penalty. So a good tire change and everybody should be pitting and we should have no big issues. So into the box we go up on the jacks, off go the hards, on go the intermediate tires. And we've got about 13 laps uh, to go in this race. We've got the lead of the race and a, a healthy margin. Now, just be careful on the pit exit here because you are coming from such a slow speed that it's easy to get on the throttle a little too hard 
and uh, crash yourself out. But out of the pit lane we go through turns one and two, and we've got a nice six second margin to uh, chronicle about. And uh, we will just try and, and hope for green flags the rest of the way. Um, because, you know, safety cars ruin me always. Baku and Canada, two sure race wins that were ruined by, by late safety cars. And so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it doesn't do it to me three times in a row. We've already had one safety car, but that was very early on, two laps into the race from Chuck's retirement. And now we are in a, in a comfortable uh, comfortable spot as we navigate the, the moist track of uh, Circuit Paul Ricard. So interestingly enough, for somebody who hates the rain, racing in the rain as much as I do, it's kind of ironic that my first race win came in the rain at Imola, and we're in a very good position here. A little wide through scene, but we are in a pretty much don't bin it home. Just need to basically be about a half a second slower than the chasing pack, and I'll still maintain the lead of the race the rest of the way, as, as Robin is... The net closest at 7.3 seconds back. Chronicle with that three second time penalty closer to nine seconds at this stage. And uh, Gali's actually got some effort to potentially take away a podium from Chronicle. But first, uh, first lap in the wet, done and dusted. And we are uh, getting more and more acclimated to how the car behaves. And it's pretty much even Stevens on the, uh, the lap time there. 5.9 still the margin. As we, uh, we head into this life, a little deep, but uh, correctable. And a Chronicle has spun off. Chronicle's had a mistake, so that is going to allow uh, Robin to, to try and get through. It looks like Chronicle in big moments there, though, fighting the car. So while they were dicing and slowing themselves down, I nearly crashed it. Somehow kept it. Uh, doing a weather report check just to see if... Uh, if the if the rain track is getting wetter, if there is maybe a situation where we might have to go to the full wets before the end of this race, still 11 laps to go. And with how quickly it went from from a uh, rain first falling to uh, to rain coming in, it could have been a concern. But we'll jump ahead now, as it was relatively quiet the rest of the way. We are starting the final lap. 6.7 seconds ahead of Chronicle, who is carrying that six second time penalty. Our closest actual competitor, Robin, on 8.2 seconds margin. We pick up a track limits warning, but I think that was only our only one, if I remember correctly, uh, in this race. We weren't in any danger of picking up a track limits penalty around the track, but uh, the rain did subside. It stopped raining, so I, not only did we not have to go to those, uh, those full wet tires, the rain did stop. You can see there's no longer those little streaks on the halo. There's still some water on the camera, but it is uh, quickly washing away. You can see the little bit lighter sky up above us. So you can see we've given up a considerable amount of time. Chronicle out of the race on the last lap. So big implications for their championship hopes. They were second in the championship to Robin. We're in a position to pick up a, a good haul of points as we were far ahead of the the chasing pack of, of P5. So he would have had nice solid fourth place points, but that is him out and us just casually driving to the line. Now, earlier in the race, of course, um, we had set the fastest lap of the race and then in the dry conditions. So naturally when the weather comes in and the track gets wetter and slower, nobody's going to go quicker than that. So we've held the fastest lap of the race for, uh, for most of it here. And we will, Hold it at the end as nobody is going to go quicker while still on the intermediate tires than what we did uh, on dry tires earlier in the day. But out of the final corner, easing our way onto the throttle gently. The checkered flag is waving and we pick up our second race win of the season. Race win and the fastest lap in this one led every lap but one as we took the, uh, the race lead on lap two. So... A big, big day for, for us in the championship. Chronicle spinning out. We do finish ahead of Robin. Uh, so we will get a little bit into that gap. But uh, feels good to stand on the top step of the podium once again. 
and spray the champagne. So it was looking like a tough start and, uh, you know, definitely not ideal situations. A little stutter to the championship challenge. Another race win will put us uh, that much closer. Still a ways to go in the season. That was round 7 of 13. Uh, but you can see 35-1, fastest lap by a considerable margin. Uh, Chronicle had the second fastest on that, 35-7. But we went full pelt one lap on uh, on our battery, and that was the difference. So, race win, fastest lap, championship challenge may be on the cards again with uh, what will be six races left to go. So thank you all for joining me once again for, uh, for FRS Season 7 and our first real on honest attempt at, uh, at challenging for some race wins and, uh, and potentially, hopefully, a championship. But thank you all once again. I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>